Good afternoon, all. Camelback Trading 2724 coming to you this Thursday afternoon, April 23rd. We are looking at the market profile of the SPY ETF here on Window Trader. We're looking at today's action, part of yesterday's, part of the 20th, because that's an important one where we filled the gap and got above the price spike. Very, very weird day today. Not an easy day. I think we, for the most part, I did okay. I did all right. I lost money on one trade, did okay on the others. Certainly nothing to write home about, though. Uh, price action was weird from the, from the beginning of the day to what G period did, which really seemed to screw up the algorithms. I had a gnawing feeling in me all day, even when we were up here, that there's something wasn't right with this market, with the poor structure that was left in A period. I told that to the room. I didn't think and didn't expect it to get filled on a flush in G, but I did expect it to get filled at some point during the day. We had two sets of single prints that were so small, I couldn't believe they even held at one point. Those obviously got wiped out, so there was no trend day. Now, value was higher 99% of the time today. It ended overlapping to higher, but I mean, just barely. The other thing is, Volume was horrible again, 101 million. We did 100 million yesterday, so we're going to do 105, 110 million. Now, we ended up basically, we ended up on change on a day, but we were up. SPY traded at 283.94. We closed at 279.04. That's, that's almost a $5 move from the, from, the, from the high of the day to where we closed. So not an impressive finish at all by the bulls. Below the 50-day moving average, and just above that long trend turn, uh, long trend line on the uh, monthly chart. Right now, we're trading, as you can see, in end period lower, below today's low. So, not a good day overall for the bulls, I don't think. So we opened up the price probe. Right now, in my morning video, the price we were trading down here. I said it's a good chance to, we don't know if the price probe's accepted or not. Well, for the most part, I'm going to say it was accepted because it opened, barely got below it in A, and here's a trade I absolutely missed. We opened in A, went back and forth through the opening one or two times, got back below, tapered off, and then when it got above the opening, shot, and that was a long, and I didn't get on board with it. That long also left that poor structure right above the opening. So I did nothing in A period. B period a period got to the price spike and took it. B got above it, came in. As soon as it came back in, I took a short play, which was nice. So I was happy with that when it got below. Then we're one time framing up now. C took out. B's high started running. Now here's another play that a lot of people in my room took. We had that double distribution yesterday. It got right up to the top of the... Lower distribution, right? Right around B's high, below H's low. A lot of guys took that short. I did not take it, but it turned out to be a very nice trade. Uh, I had higher value. I had one-time framing. I did not. Did not want to short it yet at that point, but it turned out to be a nice trade for them. What I did do then, when C came in, I got long, went back up, got out. I did the same in D. D came in, held the single prints, went back up, got out. So those are two nice longs. I tried again in E. Got burned a little bit, got involved, went up, got out, got down. Then when it stopped, the one-time framing and filled the single, I should have gotten out, but value was still higher. I was looking more, I wanted to hold A's low from the 20th. We got below it. I actually held on to it here. We had higher value. I thought value was going to get pulled up even more. Finally came back up, got out of the trade. I lost small on it. That was nothing big. And then we, we one time frame down from the high of the day until K period. So the next trade I took after E, I did nothing in F, G, H, I, or J. I was looking. I mean, value was high. It was hard for me to get on board and start shorting, even though it was the right thing. I just, you know, first of all, a, G period just happened too quick, right? It just flushed out. H. Now I'm waiting, right? G, once G did that, the algorithms are all in a, in, a, in a hissy fit. So I want them to settle down. So H back and forth, back and forth. I didn't do anything. 
I came down, took out H's low, but couldn't even take out the low. So I did nothing all those time frames. Finally in J, I was like, you know, we don't have uh, single prints. We don't have an afternoon rally high yet. We don't have anything. I think at some point we're going to stop the one time framing down. I didn't take the long down here because of that. J open, ripped down, made a new low on horrendous structure. I took a decent sized call position and got out of it as soon as we got back into I's range. It was a nice trade. Lo and behold, it would have been a great trade if I held on to it. But we were still one time framing down at the time. I did not, did not want to look a gift horse in the mouth. Finally in K, it did what I was waiting for it to do. I had tried to get involved before we stopped the one time framing down. Twice I put bids in. I wasn't going to keep reaching across. They had them spread. Never got them. It popped Jay's high. So I never got the long. That's okay. But at least the idea was right. And then in L period, when it couldn't take out K's high, I'm like, okay, that's possibly our afternoon rally high. I shorted it, wrote it back down to Pac and the opening. That was a good trade. And then in M period, same thing. Even though the indices were up, value was mostly higher, I thought if we got anything out of the 350 algo, it would be the downside. So we, when we rallied above the initial balance low and up to the opening, I took a short play, around 25 contracts. And when the 350 algo went off, it didn't know what to do. A couple of buy algos spit up to the high where it made the park, and then it went away. I thought it would go. So it was, a, it was a decent day overall. It was not. It was not an easy day uh, to read. There was a lot of conflicting information, and plus a lot of times when you're trading against short-term traders, you're not going to be faster than an algorithm. You have to be smarter than them. And the problem is after G's flush out, they're just like total, they had no idea what to do. So it was tough to figure out what they were trying to do. All right, destinations for tomorrow. Upside, K's high of 281.53. Then today's high of 283.94. 285.13 afternoon rally high from the 20th. And then 286.29 daily high. For the downside, we have today's low of 278.75. 278.22 afternoon pullback low, which it looks like we're trading at right now in the after hours, but that doesn't count for me. 278.22 from the 21st, 276.91 daily low, 273.86, nine wide from the 21st, and 278.202 daily low from the 21st. And now let's go to the charts. Okay, five days to go in a month. And again, nothing's decided with this trend line. All right? they pushed lower by $6, came back. Went above it by $6, came back. We're a dollar above it right now. 279.08 we closed at. Weekly, one time framing up for four weeks. One day to go. As long as we don't take out this week's high, of 286.79 or the low of 272.02, we could have an inside week. I would love to see that. I think it would make for a great setup going into the next week. We come out of it to the upside, we're going to blow away a triple top probably. If we come out of it to the downside, we finally stop the one time framing up. You know you'll take out the previous week's low of 271.41 also. And then you have nothing down to the 256 level. So either way, if we have an inside week, it should make for an exciting time next week. Now, daily, 10-day balance. That's a, that's a pretty pretty long time. It's a pretty large balance. 287.30, 271.41, just under $16. The middle of it, 279.36. We said yesterday we closed right in the middle of it, just about. Well, we're down two cents today. So for two days in a row... Even though we're one time framing up, we've closed right in the middle of this 10-day balance. Buyers are having trouble. And the reason I'm saying buyers are having trouble because they're the ones that are one time framing up. If it was the other way, I'd say sellers are having trouble if we came back to it. 
but twice now. We got above the 50-day moving average again today, only to close above it. Uh, <laughs> close below it, I apologize. So we've gotten above the 50-day moving average three out of the last five trading days. One, we closed above it. Two, we've closed below it. Getting interesting. Market looking for more market-generated information. I hope you had a good day trading. Have a great night. We are 100 strong now in my room on the nose. Very proud of that in less than two weeks. Check us out at camelbacktrading.org. Have a great night, everybody, and I'll speak to you prior to the opening tomorrow.